Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hopefully my cheaters will work good. I broke my ragged glasses this week. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh boy, I hear you. When we're done here today, if anybody would like these notes, say so, and they're yours. There you I go. Amen. Amen. Like Amen. Praise the Lord. If somebody would like to take it as a study, just holler and it's yours. Sounds good. Mm. Ah. Hallelujah. Father God, we praise you for your He's word. Your word is truth, and your word is life to us, Lord God, as yes. followers of Jesus. And Father, I just ask your anointing, Lord, to flow free through this house today. Lord, that your uh, anointing would just uh, pour over me, Lord God, that I would be your mouthpiece in this hour for this congregation and for all who will hear this word, Lord, on the video. And I just give you the praise and the glory that your word will not return void. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to call this message today Sound Doctrine. In Acts 20, verse 25, I'm going to be moving kind of fast here um, because of the time. Pastor reminded me that we have communion today, so if you want to just jot down scripture to can or whatever. But in Acts 25 through 27, uh, Paul said, Indeed, now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore I test to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. And when I came across that during the study this week and prepared for this message, it just struck me in the heart because when God called me, He brought me to Ezekiel chapter 33 when He, when he put the, the burden on my heart to preach His word. It says again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming, and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are, war are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his sin, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So this is very serious to me. Yes. And this is very serious to Paul. He said, I'm, I'm free of any man's blood because I've preached the whole counsel of God in your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 43. We're going to read about the birth of the church. The church is born, and they learn the apostles' doctrine. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, talking about Peter's preaching, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that the New Testament church doctrine is founded on the prophets and the apostles, yeah. with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And Amen. The church is built, which the church is built upon doctrine. Doctrine are the things we teach, the things we believe, the things we live in the church congregation. Okay? And we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ being that chief cornerstone. And Paul said, no other foundation can a man lay. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's right. That's right. Yes. Amen. But then in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting with verse 9, Paul says this, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. And according to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed 
how he builds on that foundation. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. And if anyone's work which he has built upon that foundation endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Yet he will be saved, yet as though through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Mm -hmm. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, indeed. Blessing. So here the Apostle Paul He's saying, as a wise master builder, I had laid the foundation of Jesus Christ for the church to be built on, and different teachers will build upon that foundation, but be careful how you build upon That's it. That's right. Yes. Because your Amen. work will be tested. Yes, it will. And if you go into teaching heresy, and it, it, it harms the temple of the Holy Ghost, it harms my people. Woe be unto you. Yeah. Yes. That's a serious thing when you preach the gospel. That's right. right. That's I pray right. repeatedly, Lord, help me. Don't allow me to teach false false things. That's right. Help me to be right. good and grounded in your word. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So I'd like to talk to you today how to establish what is and what is not New Testament church doctrine. Mm -hmm. This is a safety net for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Yes. This is absolutely true. Yes. But there's an order to it. When establishing doctrine for the New Testament church, we start in the New Testament. We look at what did Jesus teach His apostles on any given subject. Then we look at how did the apostles respond to that teaching from Jesus. Okay? And then we look at what did the apostles write to the church concerning that teaching, that subject. Okay? And then what Old Testament scripture did Jesus and the apostles use? Okay? And then after that we can, we can, we can study and search for ourselves and see what other Old Testament scriptures can we find on the subject. There'll sure. be more to back it up. Sure. Yes. The apostles, they use certain ones. Yes. That's how you build solid New Testament church doctrine. That's how you see what belongs in the New Testament church and what doesn't belong in the New Amen. Testament church. That's right. <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example of how this works. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. In the example I'm going to show you, there's even an extra piece of assurance, an extra piece of evidence from the, uh, than most New Testament doctrines have. Because with this particular doctrine, we have the witness of John the Baptist testifying about Jesus. And I'm going to talk to you real quick here. I'm going to show you the doctrine of the Holy Spirit bat baptism just to show you how this works on laying out proper New Testament yes. church doctrine. Yes. Okay? In John 1, verses 32... Through 34, it says, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water, God, said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. So then the first thing we have in the Gospels is John the Baptist bearing witness that Jesus Christ was the one that was going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's our first block laid in the foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. In Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, 
Luke 11, 5-13. This is a passage speaking about persistence. And I've heard it used for preaching the gospel before, but it's put into context with verse 13. <clears throat> but uh, Jesus said to them, Which of you should have a friend, excuse me, and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Don't bother me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in my bed. I cannot rise and give it to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Have you heard that with the presentation of the gospel? Yes. A lot of people use that for salvation message, okay? We're going to put it in its proper perspective here in a second. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? No. Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? See where it's put into, into proper context That's with that right. last verse? Yeah. It's talking, that whole passage is talking about being persistent and seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And then he wraps it up. If you then, being natural people, humans, fallen mankind, give good, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Amen. Amen. Luke 24, 46-49. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 24, 46-49. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And we're going to see in a few minutes that the promise of the Father was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's right. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Amen. Amen. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? to Israel. And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in His own authority, but you, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Here's Jesus putting the promise of the Father is the baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. in which you shall receive power to be witnesses for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Acts chapter 2, first four verses. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, John witnessed it. Jesus witnessed it. And now the apostles are experiencing it. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts 2.14, Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, 
since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You see how Amen. Peter tied that into an Old Testament prophecy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> Acts 2.36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. This is the same teaching I use when I, when I minister in the baptism of the Holy Spirit to somebody, to tear down the false teachings that they've been given. Because there's some that say, well, that was for them, it's not for today. But what Peter say? No. The promise is to you, yes. to yes. your children, all who are far off, as many right. as the Lord our God shall yes. call. That's right. Bam! That yeah. false doctrine is put That's in right. right. That's Hallelujah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Acts chapter 8, verse 14. <clears throat> now when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, mm -hmm. they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Right. Another false doctrine. Oh, you get all the Holy Spirit there is when you're born again. No. Bam! Right there. They were born again, and then Peter and John came down, laid hands on, and then they received Come the baptism. Amen. Right. Good Hallelujah. word. Another yeah, false good. doctrine. Throw in the trash can. Right. Good box. word. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. <laughs> While Peter was still speaking these words, he went to preach to Cornelius and his household. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, mm -hmm. for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 19, mm -hmm. first six verses. Acts 19. And it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to them, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Now listen to Paul's bewilderment. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? You haven't heard about the Holy Spirit. Because what did Peter say? That gospel never message never changed. Repent, and let every one of you be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Hallelujah. So they said unto John's baptist, and the light came on to Paul. <laughs> then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Yeah. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. And then we go on, and in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul instructs the church in spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, in Acts, we just looked at the actuality of the apostles living out what Jesus had taught them. Okay? Now we're going to look, and we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul instructs the church in spiritual gifts. He speaks much about the gift of tongues, which comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he closes out the chapter by saying, Do not forbid to speak with tongues, and let all things be done decently and in order. That's right. That's right. 
And there's more, there's more written in some of the epistles about this, but that's just the process I was explaining to you. That's my example. Mm -hmm. That is how you properly determine what is and what is not New Testament church doctrine. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Yes. It, it's important to note that if you start out in the Old Testament to build a New Testament church doctrine, it can lead to serious error. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. That's how we ended up with the Jehovah's Witnesses doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's how we ended up with the Sabbath Keepers, the Seventh-day Adventist yeah. doctrine. Yeah. They started in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. No. We're the New Testament church. That's right. Amen. We started in the New Testament. Yeah. What did Jesus teach to his apostles? How did they react to that? And then what did they write to the church on that? Exactly. You're safe every time. Yes. Safe. Yes. Stay in the Word. Amen. The reason I took time to show this to you today is that I see a sword coming. I see a sword coming. And I must speak the whole counsel of God's Word concerning the false doctrine that's crept into the church and it's destroying people that want to serve God. Mm. Yeah. The Apostle Paul came to the church of Galatia and he brought correction because they were self-proclaimed teachers telling them, oh, in order to be saved, you've got to be circumcised, pal. You've got to keep the law of Moses. Mm. And Paul said, I marvel you are turning away so soon from him to, who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, yeah. which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we... Or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we've already preached to you, let him be accursed. And as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you've received, let him be accursed. Those are strong yes. words, friend. Yes. yes. Strong words. Yes. Paul took the gospel serious. He did. And I'm here today to tell you Amen. I take the gospel serious. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you preach a gospel without repentance and remission of sins, you're going to bring forth stillbirths, not new births. Hallelujah. There's got to be repentance. That's right. Yes, yes. Right. yes there does. And while there were false teachers in Galatia trying to put the church under the law of Moses and perverting the gospel, I'm here to examine a different perversion of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. The sentiment towards those who pervert the gospel remains the same as what Paul expressed. Let them be accursed. Mm -hmm. Now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Yes, Speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. The Spirit says this. Paul told Timothy, remain in Ephesus so that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And the doctrine we're going to look at today has been given several different names. Those who teach this doctrine call it eternal security or the preservation of the saints. Those who oppose this doctrine call it once saved, always saved, or greasy grace. Well, what does the Bible say? Yes. The basic premise of this doctrine goes like this. Once you say the prayer, you never have to worry about sin again for the rest of eternity. It's true. Yeah. You said the prayer. Yeah, yeah, heard that. It says God has you in the palm of his hands and nothing can snatch you out of it. For where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says you just go live your life however you want to and you're bound for the kingdom of heaven. Nothing can separate you from God. Yeah. It says we are living in, in the age of God's grace. So just go and enjoy life however you want to. Once you're in, you're in. And it's impossible for you to lose your salvation. But what does God's Word actually teach? Yes, 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 yes. Let's see if this doctrine actually stands the test of examining it against the Scriptures. Remember I told you first you must look at what Jesus taught to His apostles in order to establish a New Testament church doctrine. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 8, verse 4. Go 
Luke 8, verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke a parable, Jesus. A sower went out to sow a seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Excuse me. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears, let him hear. And I said that today. He who has ears, let him hear. And then if we go down to uh, Luke 8, verse 6. In 8.13, what do I got here? 8.13. 8.13. Stony ground hearers. This is Jesus explaining that parable to his apostles. But the ones on the rock, the seeds that fell on the rock, are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in a time of temptation, fall away. Mm -hmm. They heard the word. Yeah. Yeah. They voted for Jesus. Sure. Yeah. But in a time of temptation, what happened? They fell away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that doctrine said that can't happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thorny ground hearers, Luke 8, 14. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, they go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. In other words, they go out and live in the world. They made a vote for Jesus. And the cares of the world, the pleasures of living in the world, choke the life out of them. And Jesus Christ is the life. Mm -hmm. That's, right. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. This is Jesus teaching on what happens to people in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's true. Matthew 24, 45 through 51. Matthew 24, starting with verse 45. Hallelujah. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And the word tells us the hypocrites are going in the lake of fire. Yeah. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jesus said, these are the ones in my household. I'm the master. You're the household, church. Right. When I come back, if I find you eating and drinking with the drunkards, living in the world, living wallowing around in sin, it's not going to be good. No. That's right. Good not word. Right. Good, good word. Not good. Matthew 18, verse 23. Matthew 18, 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, we live in the kingdom of heaven when we're saved, right? Yes. We're in the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with the servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me and I'll pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave his debt. That's the, that's the gospel message right there. Amen. Amen. We owe a debt we cannot pay. Amen. That's right. yeah. The master says, I forgive you that debt. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Let's read on. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, pennies. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you all. And he would not. But he went through him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved. 
And they came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, uh-huh. I forgave you all that debt because you asked me. Yes. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers till he could pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Mm-hmm. The torturers are the demons. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yes. And we can never pay what's due to him. That's we can't right. pay it on our own. That's right. That's right. That's, That's right. the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Yes, indeed. He was in the kingdom. He was forgiven threw himself at the master's feet said, forgive me, forgive me. His master said, you're forgiven. Then he went out and sinned against his brother. And his master's like, you're going to be delivered to the tortures until you can pay the debt that you owe me. Mm. But you never pay that debt. Mm-hmm. Jesus sent warning to the churches in Asia Minor. He told them that they held the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which he hates. And that doctrine basically taught the church that it was okay to go and mingle in the temples of the unbelievers and to partake in their sins in order to be accepted. Oh, you know, we got to be loving, we got to be accepting, which we do. Right. But we don't go and water in the, in the temples of demons. That's right. You don't That's do right. that. That's right. That's right. That's what the Nicolaitans were teaching. You know. said, I hate their doctrine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He told them they also had those who taught the doctrine of Balak, which was putting a stumbling block before them by teaching them to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Jesus said, you need to repent. Mm -hmm. And then look at Revelation 2.20. Revelation 2.20. Jesus speaking says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls her, excuse me, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I'll cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. And that phrase, kill her children with death, it actually means that separation of the soul and body by which the life on earth is ended with the implied idea of future misery in hell. Does that sound like once saved, always saved? Mm-hmm. It doesn't. Not at all. And her children is another way of saying her disciples. Those who sat underneath her teaching. Yeah. Those who bought it. Those, those that didn't compare it to the Word of God and say, whoa. You know, the basics that were sent from the apostles of the, in the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. So to abstain from sexual immorality. That's right. Simple, That's right. plain. Yeah. Yes. Jesus told these churches they need to be zealous and repent. He tells them he loves them and that they need to overcome these sins so they can sit with him on his throne. That's right. He tells some of them they're lukewarm and that for this reason he'll vomit some of them out of his mouth. Do you know the fastest way to become lukewarm? Start playing with sin. That's right. That's the fastest way to become a lukewarm yes, it believer. Is. Yes, it is. Start playing with sin. Yeah. See, when you get to a place where you consistently choose to sin, you have left your first love. That's right. Remember Jesus said that to one of the churches? That's right. I have this against you. You left your first love. That's right. That's right. You love yourself more than you love Jesus. You're on the throne of your own heart instead of seeing Jesus there where he belongs. Mm-hmm. Jesus loved you enough to shout, Repent! Right. So what we've just looked at shows Jesus teaching that some will receive the gospel with joy. They believe for a while and then give them the temptation to fall away. 
Jesus also taught that some would get caught up in the cares and pleasures of this world and, and have the life choked out of them. And he said he would kill the disciples of Jezebel who taught his servants to commit sexual immorality and sacrifice to idols. Now we got to ask, how did the apostles react to his teaching? One of the first things that happened was Ananias and Sapphira decided to lie to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Peter's like, why have you chosen to lie to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And Ananias fell over dead and they carried him out. And a little while later, his wife comes in. And Peter's like, how is it that you decided with your husband to lie to the Holy Spirit? Behold, the same men that carried your husband out of here just a little while ago are also going to carry you out of here. She fell over dead. She did. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. Does that sound like once saved, always saved? No. <laughs> no. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. The Apostle Paul writing Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Romans 11:13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy, and the root is holy, and so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them become a partaker of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches. But if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. Who's the root? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said. Because of unbelief they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. Yes. For if God did not spare the natural branches, He may not spare you either. Mm. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God. On those who fell severity, but toward you goodness. If you continue in His goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. See, there's a theme throughout the New Testament of endurance. Yes. It's not just, oh, I vote for Jesus, and then go on about your life. That's it's right. endurance. That's yes, right. it is. Right. Well, also, right. in the race, you've got to run according to the rules. That's right. The prize. That's yes. right. And I'm not talking about stinking religion. No. It's That's not right. a list of, of rules that we, oh, check that one off, check Amen. that one off. Amen. It's following Jesus Christ with your whole heart. That's right. Amen. That's right. First Corinthians. 6 9. Paul, again writing to the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians 6 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit, inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. He's talking to the church. Neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. That's bad news. Yes. <clears throat> the good news, verse 11, and such were some of you, but you were washed, uh -huh. but you yes. were sanctified, yes. but you were justified yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. and the, by the Spirit of our God. See, yes. if you're falling around, walking around, Believing you can live your life any way you want to, playing with this sin and playing with that sin, you're not being sanctified. That's because right. sanctification is where you learn how to put sin out of your life, 
how yes. to be victorious over yes. sin. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes, you do. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The Holy Spirit's here to help you. He's your helper. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's right. First yes. Corinthians nine twenty seven. <clears throat> See, we're not saved by works, but we have a part in it. Amen. That's right. We're saved by faith. Because I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I probably ought to do what the Son of God tells me to do. That's right. Right. Okay? Good if word. I believe He's the Son of God, I'm going to do what He says. Yeah, preach right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yes, amen. First Corinthians 9.27, yeah. the Apostle Paul says, yeah. But I discipline my body yeah. and bring it into subjection. Thus, when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. That's right. I thought you couldn't be disqualified according to that false doctrine. Mm. The Apostle Paul says, I discipline myself lest I become disqualified. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes, he did. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul warns that the things that happen to the children of God in Exodus are examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. He tells the church that though they all pass through the water, which is a picture of baptism, mm -hmm. they all drank from the spiritual rock who was Christ. Yep. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, and their bodies were scattered out through the wilderness. These were the children of God. Yes. Yes. And yet they died. Mm -hmm. They were gone because mm -hmm. God was not well pleased with them. That's right. He wasn't. Take a few minutes this, this week and study 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Mm -hmm. You want a good study? Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. The word translated as vain is kainos. It's a metaphor for the destitute of spiritual, for being destitute of spiritual wealth, of one who boasts of his faith as a transcendent possession, yet is without the fruits of faith. Mm. That's what he's saying there. Don't, don't receive the gospel of grace of God saying, oh, I, I've got eternal life. And there's no fruit. That's exactly yeah, that's what Paul's right. saying there. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. And there's no fruit in your life. Yep. No fruit. Yep. Tree with no fruit is a dead tree. Yeah, that's, right. That's, right. that's right. That's right. Yes, it is. Bible. Amen. Now let's talk about grace in a moment. After all, it's God's grace is at the very center of this false doctrine. Grace, 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 grace. They don't understand grace. See, one facet of God's grace is that it gives us the power and desire to overcome sin. Mm -hmm. It trains us how to walk in Christ. Yes, it does. Yes. Yes, it does. Paul told Titus, he said, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, training us, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, excuse me, who gave himself for us, yeah. that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Are you being purified today, Saint? Are you being purified? Is there less sin in your life today? Are you giving in this temptation less than you were yesterday? Are you being purified? Are you zealous to do good works? That's right. Yes. Good works don't save you, but you were born, reborn, to do the works God called you to do. Yes, amen. See, grace in the life of a brand new believer is like training wheels on a child's bicycle. Grace helps you to keep on the sidewalk while you learn how to balance yourself. Grace helps to keep you from crashing into the ditch and giving up on learning how to ride the bike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And if we allow this part of God's grace to do its work in our lives, we come to a point where we no longer need the training wheels 
in order to ride safely down the path of a fruitful Christian life. Yes. Okay? We don't need that that part of, of God's grace working in our life anymore. That's right. There's so many facets of God's grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Sadly, there's some that will hear this message today who've been riding for years and still need the training wheels. Why? Uh, Why? Yeah, Because they have not surrendered to that initial grace from God and they were saved. Yeah. True. They didn't let God's grace work in their life. They refused to mature in Christ in order to allow the other facets of grace to start working in their life. Yeah. The writer of Hebrews said, by this time you ought to be teachers. Yes. But here we are having to stick the nipple in your mouth and you feed your milk. Yeah. Oh yeah. By now you should be able to take the basic elements of, of Christianity and yes. teach them to others. Yes. But you're still on baby food. Still on baby food. God's grace is not Him overlooking your sin. It's Him empowering you and giving you the desire to overcome your sin. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. God's yeah. grace. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's not God's saying, oh, I'm not looking at your sin. It's God saying, hey, I give you the power to lose that desire and to overcome that sin. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Those that don't want to give up their pet sins will try to quote Paul in Romans 5.20. Well, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But what's actually going on in that verse when we read it in context? That's right. Therefore, Romans 5.18 Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, Jesus, many will be made righteous. Hallelujah. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Yes. That's that scripture right there. Paul's given a history of the world. How sin entered into Adam, but then salvation entered into Jesus. But how the law entered in to show how sinful sin was. But where sin abounded because the law exposed it, God's grace abounded even more. The picture God showed me was like, I walked through this world for 39 years. I had a big heap of sin hovering in my life. You know, maybe you didn't. Maybe you only had a little bit of sin. It doesn't matter. However much sin you had in your life, God's grace abounded above that sin That's to right. get rid of yes. it. Yes. To wash it away, yes. to free you from it, yes. put it behind you, never to be talked about again. That's gone. That sin's gone. Right. His grace abounded. Where right. the sin in your life abounded, Grace abounded more to get rid of that sin. Yes. And that's what that scripture is teaching. Mm -hmm. It's not saying, and it, it's not saying, oh, well, let's let Paul speak here. Because Paul himself drives a nail right through that common misuse of Romans 5.20 with Romans chapter 6. See, there weren't chapters and verses when Paul wrote this letter. Yeah. And he starts with the words. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. Certainly not. How should we who died to sin live any longer in it? That's right. Yeah. Bam. Bam. He puts that to rest. Bam, bam. Yeah. In Romans 7, Paul talks about how when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were working our members to bear fruit unto death. As a Pharisee, he wanted to obey the law, but he couldn't. As it is written, by the law shall no flesh be justified. No matter how much he wanted to keep the law, his old nature, the nature that he inherited from great-grandpa Adam, caused sin to dwell in his flesh. Yet with his mind, he wanted to please God. And he ends up chapter 7 with both a question and the answer to that question. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus will deliver you from this body of death. Amen. Yes, He will. Hallelujah. Yes, He will. Praise you, Jesus. 
Praise Jesus. Yes. See, once we're born again, our old man is buried with Christ. And by the grace of God, our spirit man, the inner man, is empowered to now rule over the flesh. Your flesh man was in charge. That's why you did all the stuff you did. Sin ruled in your flesh. And you sinned. It was your nature. But by the grace of God, when you're born again, our spirit man is given the power to now rule over the flesh. We no longer have to walk in the flesh, but we have to make choices. See, God, right. when you were born again, God didn't take away your free will. That's right. That's right. Because right. He wants you love. Yes. Right. Robots can't love. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. Right. Robots cannot love. Cannot. So we have free will to show God our love. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commands. That's right. <laughs> you know, we choose. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul starts out chapter 8 Romans by saying, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't stop there. Who do not walk according to the flesh, Amen. but according to the Spirit. Amen. And then he tells us how to know the difference. In verses 5 and 6 of Romans 8, Paul says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Where's your mind set this morning? Spirit. You thinking about the next party, the next talk, the next drink? Nope. Are you thinking about sleeping with your girlfriend? Come on. <laughs> Where's your mind at? Exactly. Get it out of the gutter and get it in heaven. Get it out. Amen. Amen. I'm not mad at anybody. I love you. Yeah. I love you. Yes. Yes. Where is your mindset? Is it set on the things of the flesh, the, the pleasures of, of the world we live in? Or is it set on the heavenly places? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You got peace in your life? Because I tell you, the people I know that are, are riding the fence got no peace in their life. That's right. They got right. one calamity, one tragedy, one drama, yes. right after the other, hitting their life. Bam, bam, bam. No peace. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Exactly. And then he reminds us that who's there in the flesh, those that are in the flesh cannot please God. No. And please make note that he wrote the following to the church in Romans 8. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Mm -hmm. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Yes. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Yeah. Paul told the Corinthians, he said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. Friend, are you a new creation in Christ? Are you still walking around as the same old sinner that you were before you voted for Jesus? Examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Romans chapter 13. I'm hurrying, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> and the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverently and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh yeah. to fulfill its lust. That's right. That's right. Make no provision. Don't go trampling around where you know that the devil's out to get you. Don't go trampling around in that camp. That's right. Hallelujah. Make Amen. no provision for the flesh That's to fulfill right. its lust. Yes. At the church in Galatia, false teachers came in and started teaching the church they needed to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. Paul said in Galatians 5, 4, You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. I thought I couldn't be separated from God. That's what estranged means. He said, if you become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. I thought you couldn't fall from grace, mm -hmm. according to this teaching. Yeah. 
Why would Paul say such a thing? Would you consider it safer to stick with the Apostle Paul or go with many of the modern day teachers? Come on. Oh, go with Paul. Paul. Yeah, right. Paul. God felt prudent to put Paul's words into the Bible. Yes, yes, he did. Mm -hmm. yes, he did. Yes, he did. For us. Yes. Yes. So that we could weed out those teachers. Amen. Amen. Paul spoke to the church in Galatia about the struggle between our flesh and the spirit. He reminded them that if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. He also reminded them that if they do walk in the Spirit, then will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He then goes on to show them the difference so there can be no doubt about whether you're walking in the flesh or in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 19-25 Now the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is pharmacia, which includes drug use, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as also I told you in time past, that those, he's talking to the church, who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why did Paul keep warning the church that those who practice sin in their life will not inherit the kingdom of God? Why? Have you made any of these things part of your life? Do you practice them? Now look at the contrast. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, <laughs> kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control. You are powered by the Holy Spirit to exercise self-control yes. over the lust of your flesh. Amen. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Have you crucified your flesh with its passions and desires? Paul doesn't leave the church hanging there. He tells us that if a brother or sister is overtaken in any of these things, we should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering ourselves, lest we also be tempted. That's good news. Yeah. Jesus loves us enough that he has warned us to repent before it's too late. He doesn't just give up on us the moment we commit a sin. And he taught about this in one of his parables, Luke 13, 6. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why is it using up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it, and if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that you can cut it down. Get that? Yes. 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13 This is a faithful saying. For if we die with Him, we shall also live with Him. Yes. If we endure, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He will deny us. If we are faithless, faithless He remains faithful, He cannot deny Himself. The theme of endurance is woven all throughout Paul's writings to the church, and it totally goes against the false doctrine of once saved, always saved. Yes, yes. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and read uh, Hebrews 10 this week. Hallelujah. Because Paul says in that passage, we are not those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. Second Peter talks about the depravity of false teachers. How they go after and entice unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices, practices and are cursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, Balaam the son of Peor. He says, They are wells without water, they got nothing for you. Clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's those that are building on that foundation with false teaching. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom, 
They themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog revert, returns to his own vomit, and a sow having washed to the wallowing in the mire. Mm-hmm. And finally, brethren, you've been waiting for that. <laughs> and finally, brethren, James shows us the process of sin in the life of the believer. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself attempt does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's your flesh. Given him the lust of your flesh. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. You give into the lust of your flesh. That's right. It gives birth to sin. And sin, if you don't nip it in the bud, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. And some are going to try to tell you, well, that just means your your physical life. You could die because you know, because of your sin. But let's let James say what he was saying. The last two verses of James 5, 19 and 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, if anyone from among the church wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. God loves you so much that he not only inspired the apostles to teach you sound doctrine, but he inspired me to remind you of these things today because he loves you. Amen. He loves you. Yes. He doesn't want any of you to draw back to perdition. His will is that all would repent and come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Lord, for your word. If anybody wants this, holler, you can have it. If you're studying else you want it, sister, you can have it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm going to move along because Pastor Ken wants to do communion now. Man. Sorry for the time. <laughs> good word. Good word. Good word. Good word. Amen. I was going to say, somebody need to grab those notes. <laughs> Glad Louis got them. Those are very powerful. And yes, they are. I'm sure if anybody wants copies of that, Louise will give you copies. So Louise. I can email them if you want. Or you can copy. Smoking an email. email address. So, you know, he had to bring the scripture in context. And and it's true. What he was sharing was the authority of the Word of God. Um, here's what you've got to understand with all this. What I see, there are too many scriptures telling us, as believers, to live right. You wouldn't want to take the chance of receiving that other type of doctrine Right. That you can just live any way you want to. That's right. That's right. And we got people today that are doing that. That's right. Yeah. And we know some of them, they are doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. God loves them. It's not God's best for them to be wallowing in sin like that. And you can't play patty cake with God like that, man. You can't. It's dangerous. I even heard a preacher who I respected for many years. I could not. I was shocked to hear him say something that was derogatory to the Word of God. And he was saying, just like Smoke said, once you receive the, you, Christ, no matter what you do in your life, it don't matter what kind of lifestyle, it doesn't matter, you'll go to heaven. You'll lose reward, but you'll go to heaven. That's a lie. The Scripture really tells us plainly. I'd rather believe God's Word, wouldn't you? Yes. That's why it's so important what you are hearing today, ladies and gentlemen, is that you find out what the Bible says. That's right. That's right. This is why you need to know your Bibles. That you find out exactly what is being taught 
behind this pulpit is coming directly from the Word of God. Amen. 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 Or out there wherever you're listening to the Word. Uh, so I'm, I'm finding out things today. I go, oh my Lord, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Anyway, but I can't believe this. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. And we're sticking with that. That's right. We're sticking with that today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, he was loaded. He had so much in there, he had to get it out. Yes. You know, and and uh, and let people know that, you know, listen, God's grace covers it all, but it doesn't mean for us to just... Grace is a license to serve God, not to go out and sin and do it. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. right. Amen. And when he shared about grace, grace means you denying ungodliness is what it also means, right? Amen. It's in Titus. He, he read it for us. It says this clearly. Grace not only covers your sin, but grace also teaches you to do away with that That's right. and to live right. Thank God. Yes. God provides it all for us. Amen. Amen. That's yes. right. Amen. Yes. Now listen, Amen. what Jesus did at the cross for us was for all eternity. Amen. Amen. I believe Amen. That, that when he saves us, he saves us for eternity. Amen. Amen. I believe that. But I also believe, and I've shared this with us, Brother Smoke before, uh, too, about this, that uh, you got to keep the faith in order to land in heaven. <laughs> okay? Amen. Keep the faith. Don't go shipwreck. Amen? Stay on course. And there's many scriptures, as you know. So get get some copies of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stuff we need to be reminded of. Amen. And uh, thank God, because I'm telling you, I... I've heard many debates on this subject. I've heard different people. I respect. I love them. I disagree with them on, you know, some of the things that, you know, believe in that area. Uh, I told you know, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to hear what the word says, right. not Amen. what present day people say. And I just, I just can't understand that. You know, there's too many scriptures telling us. Live don't don't forfeit that. Amen. Amen. Man, I, I can go on with what he said, but I'm done here. But we're going to receive our communion today. And uh, honey, would you mind and uh, uh, pass out the elements and I'll read scripture. And, can you and, ask uh, them to come up here? Amen. And so, okay, praise God. Would you all come up? That's what my wife said to me. So come on up here. And, We'll just do it that way. Um, and for us today, you know, receiving communion is part of the, uh, our discipleship of God. <laughs> Amen. And then Jesus said it this way. He says, For I received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, the Apostle Paul said, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me okay and then in the same way he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me see there's a reminder for all of us here so we were reminded today of what the scriptures imply for us. Amen. And uh, so, you know, I just cannot, you know, I'm just trying to help us to focus what the blood has done for us. Amen. And Jesus said, for whosoever will, let him come unto me. And so we want to receive this morning in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For the bread of heaven, as we pray, thank you, Father God, so much for the bread that, Lord, you said, if we partake of that bread, we'll never get hungry again. So grateful, Lord, because, Lord, you satisfy our soul, and you give us eternal life as those who believe upon you. And thank you for your body, that even it said your body was sanctified for us. That means set apart devoted to God the Father and to live a holy life. And thank you, Lord, 
that you said, be holy, for I am holy. And that means to be separated and devoted to you. And Father, we devote our time to you. Thank you and remembering for what Jesus Christ has done for us through his body. His stripes, we are healed. His wounds, we are delivered and set free. Thank you for the blood of Jesus upon in that body. The royal blood that set us free in Jesus' name. Everybody protect with bread. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if you notice, uh, Brother Schmuck was sharing in the beginning, laying the foundation of scriptures of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, going through it. And as you go through it, you can see the thread of sound doctrine. And that's how you know you got the right stuff. Uh, I think it's that Corinthians said that two or three witnesses establish a matter. And that means you follow scripture after scripture. You just don't take one scripture. You've got to have other scriptures that endorse, support that one verse. Amen? And that's why you had to go through the thread of the scriptures to lay that foundation. And that's why he did what he did. So that's what he called sound or discipline teaching that is good and godly. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank God. Who would like to pray over the cup this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody? Anybody? Praise God. I know my wife likes to. She really likes the power of luck. But I'm giving somebody else opportunity if there's anybody. Going once, going twice. All right. It's going to be my wife. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood for all of us for cleansing us of our sins. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that you gave your life willingly. We ask that you would bless this time together, Father, this element, the blood, hallelujah, that never loses its power. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Power in the blood, praise God. How many of y'all you received something today? You received that word? Praise God. You want to stay with good sound doctrine, now, ladies and gentlemen. There's too much of that stuff going out there today that is messing people up. Amen. Stay with the word. We love you. And appreciate you and thank you for all you guys are doing. Thank you for those staying over uh, to help us with the decorations. And listen, remember next week, Pastor Tim will be here, okay? Yep. And so we want to have some rock and roll time. With you, oh, okay? Yeah. So let's go for it. Thank you guys. God bless you so much. Anybody want prayer? Thank you. So anybody want prayer this morning? So just want to remember mm -hmm. with you. And God bless you. Thank God you all. You. Thank Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you.